Week 12 matchups that matter coming at you guys today on a Wednesday. Normally I do these on Thursdays, but because we have all the Thanksgiving days, I figured I'd bring it to you guys a day early. So everything you guys need to know to set your fantasy football lineups will be covered in this video from over-unders to implied point totals to where the Sharps are betting, advanced data points, who has the best matchups at each position, including some sicko defensive and kicker talk. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so kicking off the Week 12 matchups that matter, there is zero teams on by this week. So no need to dig quite as deep as we did in previous weeks with our start-sit decisions because we do have every fantasy-relevant player at our disposal with no bye weeks. There will be some bye weeks next week, but for this week, we have everybody at our disposal. So kicking things off with the top five over-unders and the bottom five over-unders on the Week 12 slate. Highest over-under of the week goes to the Dallas Cowboys-Washington Commanders game that will be live tomorrow afternoon. Make sure you guys get your fantasy football lineup set on Wednesday or Thursday morning if possible. Philadelphia Eagles and Buffalo Bills, 48-point uh, over-under there as well. That'll be Sunday afternoon. Uh, Houston Texans and Jaguars Sunday afternoon as well. Detroit Lions and Packers will be the 1 p.m. game for Thanksgiving. And then the Los Angeles Chargers and Baltimore Ravens game, that will be Sunday night football. So a lot of high over-under games on the Week 12 slate. A lot of fantasy-relevant players to choose from and then some of the lower over-unders of the slate you guys can see the Giants and Patriots Bengals and Steelers Broncos and Browns Titans and Panthers and, and then the Jets Dolphins which will be on Black Friday this year so um, a lot of good games a lot of bad games couple drizzlers here and there applied point totals you guys can see the teams that you want to be targeting for your start set decisions the highest implied point total per Vegas on the slate goes to the Dallas Cowboys at nearly 30 implied points Detroit Lions at 27.25 that the, both of those games will be on uh, Thanksgiving, of course. Kansas City Chiefs and Raiders there. The Chiefs implied for 26 points. Eagles implied for 25.75 against the Bills. And then the Dolphins implied for 25.5 against Tim Boyle and the New York Jets. And then some of the teams that we probably want to avoid starting players from, we have the Giants, the Jets, the Browns, the Bengals, of course, without Joe Burrow now, and the Carolina Panthers. So with a ton of games on the slate, you're really going to need to be leaning on your process versus results type of decisions for your start sits because I'm sure a lot of you guys that are still watching these videos are fighting for a playoff spot or maybe you're gunning for a bye week in your fantasy football playoffs. So there's going to need to be a lot of tough decisions made this week because there's nobody on bye. There's going to be a lot more start set decisions between, you know, equally talented players potentially. So really dig deep and get a pen and paper out and start jotting down the pros and cons of each of your start set decisions. So uh, in terms of where the Sharps are betting in week 12, you guys can see some of the games catching a lot of steam on the over. We have the Colts and Buccaneers are already a relatively high total at 44. 99% of the money is on the over, so they're expecting a lot of points in that game. Then a number of these other games here listed uh, with a lot of steam on the over already have high totals to begin with. So Eagles, Bills, Texans, Jaguars, Cowboys, Commanders, and Chargers, Ravens, all of those games already 47 point or higher over-unders, all of them catching steam on the over. So if you guys have a start-sit decision involving players from these games, I would highly suggest leaning towards Tank Dell or leaning towards Devontae Smith or leaning towards, you know, CeeDee Lamb or Brandon Cooks or Keenan Allen. Whatever your start-sit decision is, you probably want to be leaning towards these games if you can. And then some of the games that you really want to avoid, you can see that Bengals-Steelers game, already one of the lowest totals on the slate, catching 99% of the cash on the under. Same with Titans and Panthers there, and a lot of cash on the under as well. Seahawks and 49ers will be the Thursday night game. Game, um, for Thanksgiving uh, and that one catching some steam on the under also and then Cardinals Rams pretty high total to begin with catching some steam on the under and then Jets Dolphins on Black Friday also a lot of steam on the under there so we could have a couple good shootouts on our hands this week in week 12, but a lot of drizzlers that you want to probably avoid in your start set decisions. So getting into the advanced data points, these are things like pace of play and, you know, defensive and offensive DVOA matchups. You guys can see some of the fastest pace games on the slate. A lot of boxes being checked for the Houston Texans, Jacksonville Jaguars game. So if you have players from that game, probably going to want to start them. Cowboys and Commanders, again, a lot of boxes being checked there. Colts at Buccaneers, also a lot of box, uh, boxes being checked there. And 
And then conversely, not a lot of boxes being checked by the Panthers, Titans, Jets, Dolphins, Broncos, Browns, and Steelers, Bengals games. I would say other than really the Dolphins in those four games that I just mentioned, you're probably going to want to avoid starting any of the players that aren't absolute must-start options there from those teams. So offensive DVOA versus defensive DVOA, this of course is how good is the offense versus the opposing defense. And ideally, we want offenses that are great offenses going up against bad defenses. And you guys can see some of the biggest matchup advantages for one offense versus the opposing defense. The biggest advantage goes to the Seattle Seahawks this week. Assuming we get Geno Smith starting, which it looks like should be the case, we do have good matchups on the outside for those wide receivers. Zach Charbonnet probably getting the bulk of the work in the run game. So definitely want to start your Seattle Seahawks. And then same goes for the Ravens. They have a really good matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. So you're going to want to fire up your um, uh, Zay Flowers. You're going to want to fire up your Gus Edwards. Probably fire up your Isaiah Likely if you were in need of a tight end. He was a good waiver pick up this week. And I don't think I'm breaking any news by saying you should fire up your Buffalo Bills, including Gabe Davis and Khalil Shakir. If you have a, a flex decision and then your Detroit Lions, you obviously want to fire up those two running backs, Sam Laporta and Amon Ross St. Brown. And then Dallas Cowboys, definitely CeeDee Lamb and Tony Pollard in your lineup, but also Brandon Cooks and uh, Jake Ferguson are also decent options this week as well. Uh, as far as games that don't have good matchups, so teams that their offense is not good, they're playing against a good defense. Ergo, we want to avoid starting uh, non must start options from these teams. Giants, Broncos, Panthers, Jets, and Commanders. You want to keep those guys on your bench if you can help it, unless they're a must-start player like a Saquon Barkley, a Brees Hall, Adam Thielen, maybe Javante Williams, Garrett Wilson, and Cortland Sutton as well. But the rest of those players, you probably want to leave on your bench. Um, that Commander situation is tough because the Cowboys uh, game is supposed to be high scoring, but Terry McLaurin and those guys involved are, are not must-starts by any means. I don't think you have to throw Brian Robinson into your lineup if you don't want to. So uh, getting into the shadow coverage match, Matchups. So uh, at wide receiver, we want to know, you know, how good is the opposing secondary? How good are the opposing corners that they're going up against? So I'll talk about the biggest matchup downgrades for the week. So some of these guys you maybe want to sit or maybe just temper expectations for. You guys can see some of the toughest matchups in shadow coverage. We have Devontae Adams going up against Legereus Sneed of the Kansas City Chiefs. Still in your lineup, but temper expectations for him. Keenan Allen against the Ravens secondary. Again, still in your lineup, but temper expectations for him. Jamar Chase expected to see shadow coverage from Joey Porter Jr. Jr., who has been really good in shadow coverage the past couple games, definitely did a very good job last week against Amari Cooper, so keep an eye on that for Jamar Chase. He also, of course, doesn't have Joe Burrow, so not a great matchup for him. I don't think he's a must-start, but I do still have him inside my top 15 to 18 wide receivers. Amari Cooper, again, going from one tough shadow matchup last week to another tough one this week against Patrick Sertan. The Broncos have been relatively exploitable against the past this year, but not against number one wide receivers. Pat Sertan has done a good job against those, and then some other tougher matchups to keep an eye on. They're not shadow matchups necessarily, but Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle have a tough matchup against the Jets. Um, Sutton and Judy, tough matchup against the Browns, as everybody does. And then Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, as I already talked about, tough matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. As far as your neutral matchups, so there's a couple of things that we can uh, glean from the context of these situations. DeAndre Hopkins against the Panthers secondary. The Panthers have been really good against fantasy wide receivers, so much so that all receivers that play against the Carolina Panthers, 90% of them, in fact, are going below their seasonal average in terms of fantasy production. But DeAndre Hopkins is moved around the formation a decent amount, and the Tennessee Titans have been pretty good when they've been playing about comparable caliber teams. So I do think Hopkins is still a fine start, but he does have a relatively tough matchup. Same goes for Drake London against Paulson at Debo. Again, he would see Marshawn Lattimore in shadow coverage, but Lattimore is going to be expected to be out for a couple games. But Adebo has been pretty good in coverage himself. So it's not a great matchup for Drake London, but he can, you know, get things done regardless. And then some of the better matchups on the slate, you guys can see some of these green matchups, basically meaning that these guys are upgraded. Amon Ross St. Brown versus the Packers corners, he's going to feast. Puka Nakua versus the Cardinals corners, he's going to feast. And we don't really know if Cup is going to be out yet, but assuming he is, Puka Nakua is a great play. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. and Josh Downs also so great plays against the Buccaneers secondary. Jamel Dean's probably going to be out for this game. Carlton Davis is banged up. It's not like the, the secondary in Tampa is really ravaged by injuries right now. So Pittman and Downs are definitely guys I want to get into my lineup. Diggs, Davis, and Khalil Shakir versus the Eagles. That's going to be a high scoring game. Diggs and Davis especially should be good um, options. And even Khalil Shakir is a low end flex play. Lamb and Cooks, again, also really good options against the Commanders secondary. And Adam Thielen against the Titans corners, also a very good matchup for him. So moving on 
on to the positional matchups. So I already kind of touched on a lot of the wide receiver stuff, but quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. Top five easiest matchup for quarterbacks. You guys can see them on my left. Bottom five easiest matchups for quarterbacks. You guys can see them on my right. So uh, takeaways from these matchup charts, you guys can see Dak and Lamar Jackson are must-start options this week with super, super high ceilings as well. So those guys, you're definitely going to want to get them into your lineup if you can. If you guys are in need of streaming quarterback options, I can't see why you would be because there's no buys this week. But if you suffered an injury, maybe you had Joe Burrow or something, uh, Josh Dobbs looks to be like the best option. So if he's available in your league and you lost Burrow, go out and get Josh Dobbs. If you're really desperate, Derek Carr and Matthew Stafford are also very widely available in most leagues. And those guys should be some decent production pieces as well. As far as the matchups that are difficult, some of the guys that you're going to want to leave on your bench include Russell Wilson and Sam Howell. I probably wouldn't start these guys if you can help it. Although Sam Howell's in a good game environment, it's a really tough matchup and he's played poorly as of late. So I probably wouldn't start him if you don't need to. And then um, a couple guys that are usually must start quarterbacks, but really tough matchups this week, Justin Herbert and Tua Tungavailoa. You guys are going to have some tough decisions on your hands if you have these two quarterbacks because both of those guys are ranked outside my top 10 quarterbacks. So hypothetically, you could have another quarterback on your bench that I would actually sit Justin Herbert for, I would sit to a Tonga Vailoa for, if you have Dak Prescott, if you have Kyler Murray, if you have Brock Purdy, if you have Josh Dobbs, I, I, if you have CJ Stroud, I would start those guys over Justin Herbert and to a Tonga Vailoa, given the tough matchups for those guys this week. So if you have some tough decisions like that, again, weigh the pros and cons, but I actually would probably sit them for the names I just mentioned. Uh, moving on to the running back position, you guys can see um, the top five and bottom five matchups on the screen there on my left and my right. In terms of the top five matchups, Matchups. Raheem Mostert should be a top 12 guy this week on Friday against the Jets. Much more of a run funnel type of defense. It's really hard to pass against the Jets. We don't know for sure if Devon Achan will be starting in this game or if he'll be playing at all, but I will say I kind of lean towards him being out or limited. So we should see a big game out of Raheem Mostert if I had to guess. A lot of fringe options this week are the ones with good matchups too. So with Alexander Madison, with Gus Edwards, with Jerome Ford, a lot of these guys top the matchup charts, but they're kind of like RB3 fringe flex plays. So I wouldn't go crazy with those guys, but do keep in mind if you do have Madison, if you do have Edwards, if you do have Jerome Ford, they are all in really good spots to uh, to hit this week. The interesting one here is uh, Kyron Williams because the Rams have a, um, a top five matchup this week and Kyron Williams was officially activated off of IR today. The Rams also cut Daryl Henderson, who was filling in for Kyron Williams in, in anticipation that Kyron is going to be back and be a full go. So I'm fine projecting Kyron Williams as a top 24 play. If you guys have Kyron Williams, I would start him over the names I just mentioned, Madison, Gus Edwards, Jerome Ford type. So he should be back into your lineup for the most part. But again, temper expectations. I wouldn't go crazy starting him over like Jonathan Taylor because he has a bad matchup or something like that. Um, we also do have some tough matchups for some of these guys here. Jonathan Taylor, like I just mentioned, Bijan Robinson and Javante Williams. You still want to start these guys most likely, but downgrade them uh, as options that have tough matchups. And then some of the guys here that you probably could sit are uh, Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson even though Antonio Gibson is banged up, I probably wouldn't start him. James Cook also in a pretty bad spot here. With no buys this week, you should have better options in your flex spots or at your running back two spot. If these are the best options you have, good luck, I suppose. But I will say you should have better options given the fact that we don't have any buys. So wide receiver matchups, I'll just breeze through these since I talked about a lot of them already. Easy matchups for Adam Thielen, for CeeDee Lamb. Those guys are top 12 wide receivers for me with CeeDee Lamb as my number one wide receiver this week on the week. And then Zay Flowers, also a pretty good spot here for him. Garrett Wilson in a decent spot as well with no Zach Wilson and an easy matchup. And then DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, both top 30 six wide receivers for me as well in good matchups. It sounds like Geno Smith will be fine. All of the names I just mentioned are in a good spot this week. We have tough matchups, like I said, for Tyreek Hill, for Jalen Waddle, for Devontae Adams, for Keenan Allen. I would imagine those guys are still in your lineup because they're all pretty much every week starters, but keep an eye on them and, and maybe downgrade expectations. If you're deciding between fringe options like Terry McLaurin, Cortland Sutton, Jahan Dotson, or Jacoby Myers, none of those guys are must-starts. So if you have better options in your flex, sit Terry McLaurin, sit Cortland Sutton, sit Jahan Dotson, sit Jacoby Myers. Because we don't have a lot of bye weeks this week, you should have some options that you can maybe swap those guys out for. But if not, I would say just good luck with those guys because they have tough matchups. Moving on to the tight end position, you guys can see great spots for Trey McBride, a great spot for Evan Ingram, a great spot for Dalton Kincaid as well. And then with David Njoku, you guys can see he has a great matchup as well. It's a tough, you know, offensive environment because the Browns aren't scoring a lot of points, but he is getting a lot of targets. And then as far as the guys 
guys that don't have good matchups. There's not a whole lot of fantasy relevant tight ends here, like the Broncos, the Bengals, the Patriots, and the Raiders don't really have a lot of, you know, streaming options. Same with the Panthers. So, I mean, I would say sit Michael Mayer, but I don't think anybody was really going to have to play him anyway. So not a whole lot of news to break with the bad matchups at the tight end position this week. And then finally, closing out this video, if you guys need a uh, streaming defense or a defense to roll with, you guys can see some of the best defensive options this week include the Dallas Cowboys, who are my number one defense on the week, the New England Patriots in a game against Tommy DeVito, the Tennessee Titans in a game against Bryce Young, Minnesota Vikings in a game against Justin Fields, Miami Dolphins in a game against Tim Boyle. All of those options are very adequate options there. And if you need to go further down the list, you guys can see where they uh, stack up. And then as far as kickers are concerned, we have a lot of high scoring game environments this week. So definitely attack those game environments if you can. The Cowboys, the Buccaneers, the um, Saints, potentially the Kansas City Chiefs, the Eagles kickers, all of those guys target them if you are streaming that position as well. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit the like down below, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new around here, make sure to check out flockfantasy.com. Promo code FSE will get you 30% off over there. And if you guys are on the fence about signing up for Flock Fantasy, you don't exactly know what to expect. We do have a brand new video uh, exclusively to the Flock Fantasy site on in-season trading for dynasty leagues, whether you're a rebuilder, a contender, a house money team, you guys can definitely glean some insight from that video. And going forward, we will have a bonus episode every single week on the Flock Fantasy site. So if you've been on the fence, definitely go on down below, check it out, uh, hit the link and start a two-day free trial with promo code FSE right now. You can see all the value on the site before you have to pay for anything. And if you do sign up, uh, make sure to sign up for an annual membership because you get six months for free over there and also a bonus Zoom consultation with one of us for signing up annually. So if that interests you, check that down below in the description or in the pinned comment. But with that being said, peace out and we'll talk to you soon.